<laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our live episode of Drinks and Daves. Hope everybody's having a great time, so grab your libations, grab your cigars, your cigarettes, or whatever you plan on smoking this evening as we get going. How you doing, Dave? Oh, can you hear me, Dave? Sure can. Can you hear you uh, great? I'm, I'm all sorts of discombobulated, buddy. I think you, you're you looking it. fine. I was watching. I was watching and hoping, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you're doing yeah. fine. <laughs> so well, it looks I, like I, we. It looks like we got four people out there. Please introduce yourself in our chat room, our Barfly chat room. And if you get lucky, maybe uh, one of our waitresses will stop by and give you a drink. Hey, Frank, how you doing, buddy? Anyhow, so how was your day, Dave? Sweet mer It was good until I realized I cut it a little close between leave, leaving work and, and starting <laughs> this thing. And uh, so, so, you know, this is the first time I do, I've done this outside, right? I haven't been able to, to share a cigar with you during this thing. Right, and I'm like, right. you know, so... So as soon as I get home, my wife, you know, I had about 10 minutes before we go like, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, Here's Rich is here. Welcome, Rich. Yep, ah. Rich is here. <laughs> uh, but she's like, how can I help you? And I'm like, well, help me carry out, you know, because we got the microphone, the camera, all this stuff. She goes, what else can I do? And I said, well, you could pick out my scotch for me. You pick out your <laughs> cigar for me. But I don't know what's. Uh, so we did. So so tonight's uh, scotch and cigar uh, via my wife's choice. Well, tell tell Panteja thank you for helping you get through that. And we probably should get her a barfly shirt. Then I would suggest. Her <laughs> I don't think she would. she wouldn't wear it. Well, no. Well, what about what about a barfly Disney princess shirt? Oh wow, custom, custom, custom shirt. made. Custom made. Yeah. And speaking of guys, if you want your very own drinks and Dave shirts, head on over to Barbara Dave's barbershop at home for the time being, because that's where the shop is. And you can get hoodies and you can get coffee mugs and you can get uh, we're going to be working on some scotch stuff and everything else as we get going. But the important thing is, yeah. guys, tell your friends, tell everybody. You need to go to Drinks and Dave's, that YouTube channel, and subscribe. The quicker you get subscribed to that channel, the quicker we can get to 100. You will you can stop watching uh, on, uh, although we don't mind that you watch on um, our channels. We would prefer to have this in one channel whatsoever. Uh, yeah, my day, my day was interesting, too. You know that, uh, that Mondays are uh, Barbara Aaron Day. And so it was getting things going and getting up. And I, I did have an interesting wake up call at about 630 in the morning, although I did want to stay asleep just a little bit longer. Did, but did, some I nurse you, said you wake up early anyway. I do. But I went to bed at 330 last night. So I, I forced okay, myself wait, to stay up. Wait, can we hear about your night then? Sure. Uh, well, as you can see, I finally got my green screen working. And it's that beautiful. was, <laughs> oh, you don't know the, the, the issues that went on with that. Uh, there's push pins in the ceiling. There's, so I'm going to be buying a different one. And then as you can see, and hopefully uh, uh, Rich and Frank and our other uh, three folks that are out there can comment on how this mic sounds because I was, I was having some mic issues. And those of you that know me know that uh, it's either go big or go home. So I went down to our local audio uh, visual place. Well, well Guitar Center. You didn't Center. go home. Yeah, you didn't go home. Yeah, I went to Guitar Center because mm -hmm. I've spent enough money there, and I got a new boom arm, a new professional mic, new headphones, a new camera. So hopefully... Uh, <sighs> You're making me look bad, Dave. No, well, no, 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 no. Okay. Remember, you have, you have, for those of you that know you, know that you have become my, my absolute... Uh, my absolute <laughs> favorite and my absolute, here, here my, go. my, you know, you have become what we call the CE me, the CEC, <laughs> um, you know, you, you the are the best. Child. I mean, you are the poster <laughs> child for the CEC. So when yeah. I do these things, um, when I do these things, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's perfect, uh, because, you know, we, we want you to, uh, to, to, to do that and everything else. And uh, yeah, so anyway, yeah, like, back to hey, 
So back to my night. So we got that all figured out. And then if you if you were to see, because remember, we both have lighting issues. And I've got a huge ring light that I had at the barbershop that I don't use. So that's in here. And this is all in my kitchen because I'm working on a studio in one of our bedrooms that's down the road. So I've got one of those. I've got two drop shop lights facing the green screen, hence the reason why the green screen is working. And then I've got Mm -hmm. my laptop. And then, as you've seen before, the coffee maker, the Breville, is right here. All my booze is right here, right here, and right here. So I am basically encapsulated into about a six by six area. Oh, and my humidor is right there. That sounds perfect. It is. Yeah. It, it's very cozy. And speaking of that, uh, what are, I, I am smoking tonight. I don't know about you, but I am mm. smoking tonight. The official cigar. You know, we need to contact these guys. Uh, the official cigar. Oh, you did. Of Drinks yeah. and Dave's, the Metropolitan Host by Ferio Tego. Now, what are you smoking? Now, see, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about that. Um, so... How did how did it come about? So there, the, so there's a brand Nat Sherman uh, that when I started smoking cigars back in my twenties was one of my go tos, right? And then they mm-hmm. got bought by who? Somebody uh, bought them. Nat Sherman was bought sure. by um, was um, um, Upman. H H Upman. Was it? Was it? Was it Upman? No. 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 It, no they no, were no. bought by somebody. We're going to have um, to bring Tim from Cigars Daily on the show, and he can tell that'd us. That would be awesome. Probably. Yeah. Um, but they ended up discontinuing the cigar line. But then you found, and I don't know how you knew I'd be interested, but you went to one of your local shops, mm-hmm. and they had some Nat Shermans from back in the day. Right, right, and, right. Uh, and, and bought all that you could. Oh, oh, I know what it was, is that I found these, the one you're smoking. That's right, that's right, that's right. And it was some of the guys that worked for Nat Sherman Cigar, and they started this brand. That's right, very to, brand. To uh, simulate or copy or whatever the, the blends. And so I said, hey, you ought to try this. This is great. And then you found the original Nat Sherman. Right, well, so and... Anyway, and, and and you did CEC me on these because, as you know, in fact, up here there is a stack of Metropolitan Host boxes because it is definitely my favorite cigar. Yeah. So what my wife, uh, unbeknownst to me, went and picked out is one of the original Nat Shermans that you got me oh, from cool. your local shop. So that's what I'll be smoking tonight is the origin of what you're smoking. Awesome. 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 Yeah. Now, you did say that you contacted them. Yeah, I haven't heard back. Okay, we'll talk about that. So yeah. let's move on. Oh, now you're going to like this. So I figured I'm drinking, well, I'm kind of multi-drinking, uh, whatever that means. So uh, first, we're drinking because we're trying to be healthy, is Virgil's Cola. And Virgil's Cola, if you're listening, we have plenty of room in our freezers. Um, <laughs> then I, I w- when I did, uh, b- over on my channel today, I did uh, uh, budget shaves. And these were all yeah. shaves that I could do for less than two bucks by stuff. And I just happened to use a palm olive shave stick that uh, I needed to soak in water. And I found this dusty in the back. And you'll, you'll probably remember this. And those of you of a certain age will remember this. And maybe a tear will come down your eye. But I'm drinking Monkey Shoulder, which is a blended, a blended scotch. And I'm drinking that in, are you ready? An A&W miniature <laughs> <What>? root beer. <laughs> now, Hello? there's a story on these, too. And I don't know if you remember, but when, when, when A&W root beer had the A&W root beer stands, they were a drive through and that drive through uh, when you were a little kid, they gave these exact mugs full of root beer. And if you brought it back mm. every time, you got a little, you got some of the A&W root beer. And so this is the one that I had when Whoa. I was a kid some 50 year, 40, 50 years ago that my dad got me. And uh, I've been, you know, it's just been sitting in the shave den, uh, you know, just collecting dust. And I figured, you know, so I washed it and I'm going to, Cheers to Dad. Cheers to A and W Root Beer. <laughs> That's so. awesome. It looks like I mean the the paint on that is still fresh. Yeah, it's it's been my mom. You know, I didn't even know 
I didn't even know my mom had it. And when she passed away in 2016, you know, we started going through boxes and boxes and boxes, mm. and I found it. And, uh, you know, at first I was like, oh, isn't that cute? And then I started thinking about it. I was like, you know what? Nostalgia, I think as you get older, uh, nostalgia has a tendency to, uh, to, to get uh, to, yes, Major Rich, the frosted tiny mug. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then as you can see, I, I did the whole, the whole thing now. So we should be. And so those of you out in, uh, in the bar, tell me, how does this mic sound compared to uh, my last mug? So please comment on that. And it was actually uh, a Zoom call that we had for game night that Chad runs that uh, this came about uh, because apparently they couldn't hear Sharon. And, of course, never being one to... Uh, lose an opportunity <laughs> i said oh wait a minute that means i need to go buy new stuff so um so that's it. oh wait instead of you enabling me to buy stuff maybe i should just be the hand-me-down guy well i would say that but that mic is actually uh, there's a certain individual that has already claimed uh uh, claimed, uh, claimed uh, that. But uh, so, how was the weather there today? I know what you're going to say, and I'm going to be pissed, but that's okay. Then I won't say anything at all. <laughs> it's it's actually, you know, I complained about the heat this weekend, the heat, because uh -huh. we got into the 80s, and if I have to sweat a little bit, that's uncomfortable. This is perfect. This is like I don't know, 71. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, I know I know that you had mentioned earlier that there's a that you know we could actually do a live show together if we were to purchase uh, your oh. the house next door. The house uh, next door, yeah. And uh, as long as as long as Avocado Queen could grow uh, grow uh, avocados, that would be great. And I can hear the birds in the background, and I know that I would sit out on the deck and watch the planes landing. Great. I mean, it really would be perfect until you told me the price. Right. That, it's California money. That's a little bit prohibitive at this point in time. <laughs> um, you know, instead of having a live show with all this nice equipment, basically I would be banging on a drum with a stick. Uh, so, uh, Well, if you raise the price of your haircuts to uh, $250,000 <laughs> a purse, you know. Yeah, that's true. I could do right. it in one, two, three, four. I could do it in five, eight haircuts, <laughs> ten haircuts. Yeah, that would be good. And if I could make that much, uh, no offense, but if I could make that much a haircut, I'd be living on an island <laughs> somewhere. That'd be all right. So but, you, ca you came up with this idea for today's topic. Yes. So what, what were you thinking? Well, I'm thinking tonight's episode is going to be us talking and hopefully the uh, the 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 bar you know, flies. flies talking yeah. about uh, DIY projects that we've done. So those of you that have done DIY projects, just uh, put it in the chat and we'll get to it as we can. Uh, and then when we should have actually called a professional. Now, the problem is sometimes when we do that type of stuff and we do DIY projects and, uh, you know, we we find out that we're, we've gone too far, this type of thing happens. <laughs> You know, that type of that type of thing happens over, over Whoa. and over again. Now, uh, do, can anybody that's out there, can anybody identify that clip? Because you've heard it in almost every single cinematic movie that has been placed out. Uh, in fact, any time anytime that you see somebody that is... Uh, hurting or gets uh it's been raiders of the lost ark when he falls off the cliff you hear uh in um any of the mcu movies and somebody falls through something in star trek when they get blown out the airlock and this is actually called the wilhelm's the wilhelm scream and it was from a movie that was in the 1940s and it uh it was about a guy that was getting attacked by an alligator and it just became uh, part of cinematic legend. Uh, and uh, I found it, and I figured that uh, it would be well, perfect. <laughs> that just shows that, you know, while our production quality might be up and down, at some places we spare no expense. No. Oh, I'm at, in fact, I wish I had that clip of, of uh, him saying that in Jurassic Park. Spare no expense. <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> 
<laughs> so, yeah, so it was just an idea, since we don't have a guest, to talk about DIY projects and really what the onus to this was, because you and I are both... Oh, and, oh wait, we forgot to ask. So what watch are you wearing today? I already know, but... What watch am I wearing? Are we doing that now? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be upside down, but this is a beautiful... It's a, it's a cheapy from, I don't know, China. Well, cheapy under 200, Seagull. But I, lo- I love the styling of it. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful seagull. First, first day wear for that. Hello, P. Beat. Glenn Fittich. That's good to hear. And and yes, um, Rich, the uh, the alligator was biting a certain part, I think. It was underwater, so we never really <laughs> knew uh, where that was going from. But uh, I'm wearing my... since, And then actually, what you wore yesterday <laughs> is the reason why I'm wearing this. This is my Bell & Ross BX05 uh, with the uh, ice blue dial. Beautiful. Well, and before you before you get into how you screwed up your house the first time, uh, f- finishing up the Loch Lomond eighteen year is what my wife picked. I think uh, nice. just because it was out on a on a counter. So, you know, one thing that should be mentioned. Cheers. Well, cheers. And one thing that should be mentioned also is on uh, Nurse Dave's channel. Every once in a while, he also does. Um, and that'd be kind of fun to do for a show is uh, do fragrance fragrances. We could figure out what we have, send them to each other. And then because uh, him and his lovely wife do uh, yeah. fragrance reviews and they're very, very good and they're very, very comprehensive. And uh, so you need to check those out and you can look in his archive uh, on his channel on Nurse Dave Shaving World uh, to do that. So. Um, so the, what, what prompted me to come up with this DIY project thing when you should have called a professional is when you called me that one day and you were working out on your carport and something happened to the uh, watch. So I'll let yeah. you tell that story. I thought I did. I thought I did on this one. You called me out the last time. Well, yeah. say it again uh, because but, I have no but, memory but, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So my, my daughter's bike is locked up uh in our carport and i don't remember what i was doing to it uh, i think putting the cover on or off of it or something like that and i'm reaching my hand around and didn't think about it and one of my much higher ender watches in this uh scraped along the cinder block of that wall and i had that brief second where i did not want to look and see if (laughs) now this this was a minuscule thing right you wouldn't have called a professional but i think that's what you're getting at is sometimes you cause more damage or expense than if you would have just done it in the first darn place called somebody that knew what they were doing exactly well my first one (laughs) and i say that (laughs) my first one was that uh i was I am no longer allowed, but shh, don't say anything in case she's watching. I am no longer allowed to get on ladders. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Years ago, when I, um, I was driving uh, you know, a high profile, like a tour coach, we used to have to clean the windows and climb up. And I had fallen off a ladder from like 13 feet up and smacked my head and you know, kind of blacked out for a little while, which could explain a lot of what's going on with me now. Uh, but here at home, you know, you, you when you're putting up Christmas lights, now our, our roof line is about oh, 25 feet high. And when you're putting up Christmas lights, yeah. it's a pain in the butt to, you know, first of all, you have to undo the ladder. You put it up against the, uh, the house, and then you trudge up the ladder. You, you hook four lights, and then you have to trudge down the ladder and then move it. Well, if you ever saw the, the movie um, Animal House, perfect example... And he was, he was uh, checking out the co-eds. Let's just put it that way to keep it clean. And he went up the ladder and enjoyed what he was doing. And then he figured they switched rooms. So what I figure is, okay, if he can do it, if John Belushi can do that, <laughs> and then I can just move the ladder by just jumping up, oh, using oh. gravity and landing, jump up, land, jump up, land. There's a problem with that in so far as that when you do that and you have uneven ground, then you have a tendency to have gravity take over. And when yeah. gravity takes over, it hurts. And so my wife went, or actually we were in Walmart one time, and it's actually really cool. It looks like a snake grabber. Uh, you know what the snake like mm-hmm. if you need to grab us well you don't you're in san francisco but if you're, <laughs> if you yeah, need to grab yeah. a snake i'm sorry we don't well, yeah have it's a different yeah it's house. a different type of snake grabbing there but um here we have rattlesnakes and bull snakes and you know and lions and tigers and bears 
You're supposed to say, oh, my. Oh, well. Anyways. Oh, my. Thank you. Uh, so it extends out 14 feet, and it's got a trigger on it. And you lock you lock the, uh, the clips that go underneath your eaves into this thing and then just hold it up, press the trigger, and boom, it puts them in. And then you can take the lights and just string them up that way. So I never have to get on a ladder anymore. It's really cool. That's cheating. But it's also keeping me from the emergency room. So that's that's one story uh, of many that um, we'll um, we'll talk we'll talk about. So let's go and take one from our folks, and it looks like Frank has got the first one, and I'll read that uh, yeah. DIY lesson learned: changing the headlights on a 2001 Forerunner is a task best suited for a trained mechanic, not a network administrator. <laughs> <laughs> And that's Did very, turn very it off true. And turn it back on again, Frank. I think that would just reset it. Yeah. Well, and the, you know, I, I, part of the problem of DIY projects now, I think, is that, uh, and I found this out changing the headlights and taillights on my Chevy Avalanche. You know, basically, it used to be that you pop the light cover off, you unplug the Sylvania round headlight, and you put the cover back on. Oh, no, 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 no. Now you have to basically take the entire front end of the car off. So I watched a video because I had asked my mechanic, um, you know, what it would cost. And I went, I, I can do it myself. So you watch a YouTube video and what you don't realize is that YouTube video has been cut, edited. And so it seems like it's a five minute project. Well, again, this happened and I ended up having to sneak up to the mechanic with no headlights in my car because I couldn't figure it out. And so that happens. Yeah. Uh, so what, what about you, Dave? Any, uh, any other things that, uh, well, you know what I'm terrible at, and I think anybody that's bought a house that's not, you know, that's more than 15 or 20 years old, you see stuff that the previous owner has done, and they'd be like, what a cheapskate. They didn't know what they were doing, right? They did it just to get by. And I, I felt the same way, except I realized I started doing those things, right? Like whenever I wanted to hang something on the wall, I, I was thinking about that this morning, that I've got an inversion to putting big holes in on the wall. And I need to get over that because I'll use the smallest thing I possibly can. But I know how much weight that can handle, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, you got to be a little careful with this shelf and that shelf and all that. But then I realized, you know, somebody else could plop something. So, so I, that's what I need to get over is using nice, meaty whatever's to hang stuff on the walls and then not be afraid of patching drywall which that's what i'm afraid of is right having that that maybe apartment patch where you see the square and it's smooth when the rest of the wall's textured and sure, that's what sure. holds me back yeah. well and i you know and i get that and you know and i think what happens too is like the, the cost of professionals now has gone just crazy stupid um you know uh, when i another one i changed i changed the headlights um or i was going to change the headlights to the headlights to led in my car and i took one look at it and rich knows this uh, i took one look at it and said oh no because you spend sixteen hundred dollars on headlights and i'm not going to screw that up so i went and took it up there and yeah you pay the price but they have a warranty if it gets screwed yeah. up, they will fix it. Um, you know, so those are so those are the things. Now, our biggest DIY guy is in our bar right now, and that is, uh, you know, that is our our good friend, um, you know, the the guy that we that we tell and we talk to and everything else, and that and that is Major Rich. So Rich, so Rich I'm hoping that you will tell us at least a little bit about uh, some of the DIY projects that you've done, because I know there's a few. So we'll wait you know, for, go ahead. You know, I don't know if it's the same there, but especially with home projects, the problem is here, there's so much building and huge renovation. If you need something small done, it's really hard to find a contractor. So we had uh, one time water leaked down into the, whatever on the roof into the main uh, power box. See, you can tell how knowledgeable I am in house stuff. <laughs> but, the, 
but they had to really re replace the whole uh you know big power box thing on the side of the house but the all the houses around here are stucco sure. so you gotta chip out the stucco which is like that chicken wire and the lath and all that stuff and you know they unfortunately did it the right way with permits and everything which means that the guy had to come out and after they replaced it you've got to get somebody to fix the stucco before they'll sign off on it mm -hmm. finding somebody to come and just repair stucco in a small that was the hardest thing nobody wanted to come and do it because it was too small of a job sure sure and it and, and and that's and that's the problem so p beat says doing your own landscaping is great unless like me you kill the shrubs oh. by pruning them <laughs> Wife didn't approve. Oh, that brings up a subject. My, um, we have, as you know, we have a fairly large property, and uh, and so we used to, when I was a little bit more spry, you know, you know, take the the chainsaw, cut things down, and then haul them across, and then make a big stack in the middle of the yard, and then let that come down. But lately, we've been, you know, hiring somebody to come and trim the trees, and we've got a ton of mesquite trees. Well. The philosophy of what my wife has for trees and what my philosophy is is totally different. I want to create this umbrella-like look and cut off anything in the middle so it just looks like a really nice thing. Sharon, on the other hand, she likes a little bit more natural looking. And so that is a, that is a constant uh, battle whether you do it yourself or whether, you know, whether you do it. And one of the biggest uh, discussions we have is, um, <laughs> is I can do that. So I'll point at a tree and say, well, I want him to do this. No, 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 don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. No, 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 I'll take care of it. No, and we both do this. And then finally, at the end of the day, it doesn't really get done all the time. So, <laughs> you know what, but this is, this is not P-Beat's fault because this is that's an art form i think because mm -hmm. first it's knowledge you got to know some plants you prune the hell out of them right and sometimes once a year you cut everything back and it grows back so you got to know what's what but then i'm impressed the people with like the nice shrubs that are like the, the sharp lines and all that mm -hmm. stuff you got to know what you're doing because i learned the hard way that you can prune off all the living stuff and what you're left is like a box shape of like dead mm -hmm. twigs and stuff like that. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, during Halloween, that's not a bad look. You know, I mean, you know, that's, that, that's, that's, that's really. Put that's, your webs on there. Exactly. So okay. our, good, our good buddy Rich says he tried replacing a sump pump anti-backup valve. It went poorly. Now, see that right there. I understood sump pump. And it went poorly. Everything else was complete gibberish to me. And so plumbing, ele uh, an electrical, is the scariest. Electrical, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't touch that. I well, did. I uh, in in a house that I owned up in Oregon. Uh, this is the most proud I've been, and I'm living off of it thirty years down the road. Is I renovated <laughs> a bathroom. Right, it had a tub. I pulled the tub out, made a shower stall and a uh, storage unit next to it. Did Wayne's coating turned out beautifully? Did my own tiling turned out beautifully? What I learned from that, though, was I put carpet in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I kind of thought, how come more people don't have carpet in your bathroom? This is luxurious, <laughs> right? You're sitting there, you know, whatever. And it's nice and soft and warm. And, well, it just took a couple of toilet overflows and having to replace the <laughs> entire carpet that I realized. This is why people don't put carpet in their bathroom it's funny you mention that because we did the same exact thing and now there is no carpet in our bathrooms because like i said <laughs> and then when you get out of the shower you know if you have a little area rug that's cool that's waterproof but you get out of it a hundred times and then underneath that carpet there could be some dampness and then there is that that odor that it's like what is that <laughs> You know, did somebody take a crap in the shower? No, and it's not. It's mildew that's been building up. And so I think you're right. That's why the professionals will say, why the heck did you put carpeting in the bathroom? You know? Yeah, well, because it's luxurious. For... Exactly. Oh, and look who's no. here. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, I like this. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have we have somebody here by the name of Pantea that says, and uh, it says, hmm, do you have pictures? If you don't have pictures, I don't believe it. Hmm, do you have pictures, Dave? I it's That was before <laughs> cameras, Dave. I don't think I have pictures. And we'd that. like to welcome Stephen. Stephen is here. We'd like to welcome him. And I'm, I can hey. guarantee you, because uh, uh, Stephen um, uh, was fortunate enough to be a new homeowner, uh, secondary homeowner, and he's putting projects together. So I'm sure he has some stuff. Um, so let's see what else we have. Okay, well, we so another this, one. This one's cute. We got to oh, call okay. this one out. Okay. That uh, Dig Lily made green corn tamales once and nobody died, but they were good. So. But yeah, tamales, that's a, that's a whole thing, right? I mean, like, uh, you hear about families getting together mm-hmm. and spending the whole dang day doing that stuff. Well, and there's another story here, and I'm not sure if it was uh, my wife's mom or if it was her. And there's a dish that we make. We Obviously, as you know, we, we eat Mexican food almost constantly. And uh, it's a green or it's a green, ch- uh, a chicken green chili um casserole and what you do is you just take tortilla chips uh green chili uh enchilada or green enchilada sauce chicken and you just cook it with cheese and everything else and you know you serve it with sour cream and lettuce just good stuff well we had eaten it and everybody was going crazy about it and everybody loved it and then the realization was that somebody forgot to put the chicken in the chicken enchilada casserole and nobody knew the difference so yeah nobody knew the difference because i think it has a little bit of chicken stock in it and um and stuff like that so here's another one okay do you you buy canned canned uh sauce enchilada sauce yeah and the reason why is because uh sharon has made enchilada sauce um from scratch and it's just as labor intensive as Mexican food is like you have to be a Mensa person to make Mexican food if you do everything from scratch. OK, may, maybe that because I was going to say when I think of Mexican food, it's the opposite. It's the same darn ingredients, but in different shapes. You've got <laughs> beans, meat, salsa, cheese, and then some kind of tortilla or a shell or lettuce into right? And it's well, always, what what I can say is, but uh, that's is American. You, yeah, you and your better half need to come and see us for the gem show. We'll take you to uh, real Sonoran Mexican food. Um, so here's another one from Rich. My most spectacular failure was I tried to tuck point a crumbling chimney. So see right there, I don't even know what tuck point is, so we'll have to ask him about that. The old mortar had been mixed with river sand, and the chimney disintegrated in my hands. The chimney ended up super crooked. So basically, he had a hobbit house. <laughs> well, that's kind of cute. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be that would that would actually be cool. Um, and one thing that uh, that Dave and I have discussed at some later point in time that we may invite. They may not show up, but we may invite our better halves to be mm. green screened out. So, in other words, you would hear this. Yes, I am. I am the wife of this person. So they would be completely uh, and and to tell bad stories about. Well, probably true stories, well, wait, but probably bad stories. Yeah, I don't know. I think you said that. I don't. I don't think I said. Bad <laughs> yeah, but stories. see, the thing is, I know, I know that a certain individual, if I bribe her with Disney princess stuff, I'm golden. <laughs> I'm golden. Jeez. I'm golden. Uh, so here's one from uh, from Trunker. Uh, Dixon says, my wife can kill plastic pants, plastic pants. No, plastic plants. Only wear leather pants, (laughs) not pleather. Do not, the the sweat in pleather pants is ridiculous. So I do gardening, but plumbing and electrical, electrics I pay for. A real quick electrical story. Uh, My brother-in-law was in the HVAC business, air conditioners, stuff like that. Very good. And one time we were up on his mom's house. Uh, fixing an electrical issue uh, with her swamp cooler. And for those of you folks that don't know what a swamp cooler is, uh, it's basically an evaporative cooler because out here we have no uh, humidity part of the year, and Stephen uh, Hayside would know about that. And we use evap coolers because they use hardly any energy at all. You can keep your windows open, and you can get the temperatures really nice and cold. But anyway, so she was fix- he was fixing that, and for whatever reason, he feels comfortable around... Uh, electrical. I don't. 
I mean, you know, like if I'm working on one thing at one side of the house, I turn off the whole house. And then I still check because I'm afraid there's something that's going to zap me. And, you know, and up on top of the, the roof for these coolers, it's 220. I mean, this is deadly stuff yeah. that can hit you. And I remember he got nailed. And at that point, I said, number one, I will never help you again. Number two, you could have died. Number three, yeah. I, I don't care how much it costs when it comes to electrical, except maybe changing light bulbs. But even then, even then. You have to think about it. <laughs> Maybe um, your wife can do that for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so wait, you and, said not plumbing or electrical. I agree on the electrical. But again, going back to 30 years ago, I had to, it was a tub and I turned it into a shower, right? So the drain's in a slightly different spot and you don't have the, the spout and whatever. And so I did that myself. I was super proud that, you know, you get the solder and the blowtorch. Um, and the, the whole DIY, the, right. The whole DIY part of that is that, you know, there's insulation in the wall where the pipes were that I'm soldering. And so I'd have to blow the fire out on the insulation from time to time from the blowtorch soldering those things shut. So the professional so, might, might have put some protection behind it or something. But, so you could have basically burned down the house. Yeah. Well, if I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Right. Here's one from PB. You don't know a ladder has splinters until you slide down it. Oh, God. And that was Bum Phillips that said that. And and we have, you know, I haven't gone out. I mean, we've got the, the, the type of ladder that you extend that goes up against the house. That when, now, there's dangers there, too, because when you're putting that ladder down, it's got these little hook, these little hooks that hook, yeah. you know, as you're putting it In up. The bottom. Now, right. Oh, yeah. Now, if you flip those hooks up and you let the ladder go... Oh, exactly. That fingers, can buddy. that can tear your fingers out. But well, we also minute. have. Yeah. You were a fireman at one point. Yes. Should you not be a ladder expert? Well, when you have professional ladders. Yes, because there's always people watching you and you take it, you know, you go slow up the ladders. But oh, when you're doing DIY, you've been on the roof a hundred times, right? No big deal. You know, you just fly up and down the ladders. But when you're taking the ladder down, you know, most of these firefighting ladders have automatic retraction. These don't, and you can chop your fingers off. Yeah. Uh, but we also have one of those rickety old, and PB probably knows what I'm talking about, these rickety old ladders that, uh, you know, that fold out but they're made of wood. They're like three ninety five at Home Depot. Yeah, those. That was part of what I was doing last night, and I actually was allowed to get up on the ladder. So I was I was very proud of myself being able to stick a push pin in. Maybe the maybe we need to tell your wife for Christmas you should get a fiberglass ladder to replace that with. <laughs> well, actually, what I want is one of those ones that folds out in five different locations. You can oh, make a scaffolding like, out of. As seen on TV. Yes, yes. I don't know. You know, that's oh. like out here. We don't have grass lawns. We have weeds and we have rocks. But I want a riding lawnmower so bad I can taste it. Well, yes. For what? I don't know. because It doesn't matter. You just need to ride it around on it with your cigar. <laughs> and, you know, and she'll say, what are you doing? I'm, I'm surveying my land. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm riding the perimeter like they did in Yellowstone. Oh, Dave, I will say we are having a request. So I'll put that up on yeah, the screen yeah, right see. now. Oops. The, the next time I use a blowtorch, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, everybody has pretty much uh, told us a little bit about some of the DIY projects they've done, except for Stephen. Stephen, uh, why don't we uh, type uh, something that, that you've done? <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> yes, this is what I want. This. This. You know, uh, let, remind me, I'll try to find it. I've seen a video of somebody on one of those things when it doesn't it's not quite latched all the way so you're kind of halfway out and then like the joint falls apart and yeah i don't think i'd ever get on one of those things well you know and, and the thing is we haven't bridged this subject yet because we you know we try to go different types of uh of subject matter but one thing that was said early on is talking about shave accidents now we are both professionals so Perfect. we're the ones that they would call. However, that being said, there are times when a professional can mess up. And here's one word to the wise that I'm sure everybody knows. If a straight razor drops out of your hand, Ooh. do not, under any circumstances, try to catch it. And 
also shave fully clothed because there are things that could get in the way of said dropped razor. Now, that has not happened to me. I swear it has not. But yeah. I have tried to catch a straight razor when it's falling, and some of the guys here have seen the damage that that does. I really don't even know what to say, Dave. <laughs> You 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 opened too many doors that I don't even want to walk through. You know? Ah, oh, come on. But no, I mean, well, you know, you it's funny and I think what happens and and this ties into the DIY versus professional thing. Um that you get complacent. In other words, you know, uh, you, you, you've done the same shave for so many years and, and you've used the same razor and you just fly around. And the next thing you know, Murphy shows up and uh, decides that whammo, you know. <laughs> Stumpy. <laughs> so, so Stephen mentions this uh, leaving paint. So I'll say this is another. So I'm terrible with not maybe securing things as secure as they should be. And then painting, I'm notorious for prepping as little as possible. <laughs> and and so most of the time when I'm painting in the house, I'll lay down a drop cloth, but I don't tape anything off. And I kind of figure if I use the roller slow enough, it's not going to spatter much. And then I can edge just with a, with a, uh, a brush. And when we rented out our, our house that I had painted inside just not too long before they moved in on the, you know, they do an ex inspection. <clears throat> and one thing they wrote on almost every room is there was paint splatters on the, on the, uh, uh the, the wind, what are the, what are the things on the windows? The, uh, the mesh, you know? Oh, okay. Okay. And anyway, apparently it splatters a little bit more than, than I think, but boy. That takes too long, right? Tape. Do you do that? Do you tape? Tape and oh, okay. And you do realize you do realize I'm married to an engineer, correct? That Does should answer tape? any question that you have regarding any project. That because projects, you know, that you because in my mind, I look at a project and say, forty five minutes. I can get it done in forty five <laughs> minutes. My wife, on the other hand, will take a day to plan the exact logistics of this 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 project then the application of said project and in this case painting everything gets taped perfectly and of course it frustrates me because i'm thinking we could be on to project number six and we're <laughs> still on project number one but i have to admit freely and everybody here and th those people that know sharon know that uh i'm admitting this that uh her projects always come out better and she does one thing that a lot of DIYers do is they save things because eventually that item that you saved can be used for a project where I, on the other hand, are like, no, just, I'm never going to use this, throw it away. And then inevitably, what the heck? you guys have got role reversal there. That's usually the guy, right? That'll say like, well, these two screws might come in handy 15 years from now. Well, Sharon does say that I'm her bitch. So, you know, I guess maybe that is that may have something to do. For it. Checks, checks out. Checks out. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, her female dog. I guess I don't know if we can even say this on on on, on right. But no, I mean, it, we're it, smoking cigars. We're drinking scotch I that, at, and drinking scotch out of A&W root beer glasses, too. Uh, no, I, I think, and, and, and it's funny, it takes a live show for me to admit this because I won't admit it a lot of times in front of her, that when she plans a project yes it may take six to seven years but it does get done and it's perfect you know so uh oh <laughs> um <laughs> well, so, you know so here's, here's a guy that does it right too full day to prep for but you're right i mean doing it the right way right i mean but that's that's the whole point of are you doing it the right way or are you doing it the diy well Stephen brings up a good point. So if you take a full day to prep for paint, and, and Sharon would agree, you tape everything off, you know which part you're going to edit, and then, of course, after the taping, then you do the edging. You do the edge in. And then you can take the roller and go nuts. But my philosophy has always been that, okay, I'm not going to tape. I'll paint. And, I, I, you know, I'm pretty good 
at controlling where the paint goes. And if I get a little overspray or a little overroll, then I take the original paint from the you know, the trim paint, and I go back over the trim. I mean, what is wrong? And then what I've done, what have I done there? I have saved tape. Perfect. See? I was just going to say this whole day to prep to paint probably is a time saver because I'm just thinking about how slowly you have to go if it's not taped off. And it's funny because I think every time I paint about halfway through, I realize that. And be like, this is taking me so freaking long if I would have just taped this stuff. But then every, you know, and then it, it, you forget that when it comes time to do it again. So P-Beat wins the comment of the day award. <laughs> Mo Howard once said that Drinks and Days was a major influence for the Three Stooges. And actually, I can figure who that would be. That would be you, me, and Rich. Rich if okay, we did so here- projects. Dave, here's why we can't have our wives on the uh, on the show. You're gonna hear this for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that's you know, but you know what that that keeps us. Um, that's a, yeah, I'm okay honest. with that. It I'm keeps right. us honest, yeah. and um, it it's just. It's just amazing how, you know, different DIY projects. Oh, okay. Here's, uh, and I'm going to put this out to, to the barflies. Why is it? Okay, you're painting a house. You're painting an exterior. And maybe people know this, and maybe I'm just a lunkhead, and I don't understand it. Okay, so you've got color paint. Okay, gray, green, blue, brown, brown black, whatever the case may be. Okay. Why, pray tell, are Do painters paint wearing... The outside of your house black. Well, I understand that. I was just using that for... for um, Go ahead. Illustration. So let's well, remove I know what black. you're going to say now. Yeah. Why do painters, all professional painters, wear white? I don't get it. Does anybody That's know the answer to that question? Point. Yeah. Let's sit and here in <laughs> silence until we get. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, I don't think I. I don't know if people have pondered that before because. It's like you see a painter and they walk into Sherwin Williams or they walk into a paint store and they're wearing white dungarees and a white shirt. And I've always wondered why does that prove to their bosses that they've been working? Uh huh. Maybe. Hey, I've got paint all over me. That means I was doing that yeah, job. But shouldn't the more professional, the higher skilled painter have less stuff on there? Exactly. Now, if I hired a painter, ah. Pantea says the color keeps you cool. That's that's a valid point. But to me, if you hire a painter and he shows up in an Armani suit, that's the guy to hire. Because you know what? If he's going to paint in a $2,000 suit, he ain't going to get himself dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. So PBT says, says that I think the white, like in medical environments, suggests an emphasis on professionalism. But, you know, speaking of that, it's not really a DIY thing, but do you still see people wearing a lot of white in the hospital environment, or do you have multicolors now? Well, the coats. The coats are still white. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it depends where you work. Some places it's just doctors wearing coats. Our hospital, everybody under the sun gets a white coat. Really? Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Now, is that, does that so, mean because anybody gets a white coat and they're the long lab coats that they can say, want to buy a watch? Can oh, I wish. That? If I could buy watches just walking down the hallway at work. I could probably never come home. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. Pentea says, but really, Google says it hides white paint stains. See, this is why it's important to have people like this in our audience, because we have right. somebody that has excellent Google foo. You know, Pentea is just and on I guess it. maybe on you it. paint white more than any other color, or probably uh-huh. eggshell, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. So what is it? Rich Rich says something. I'm sure it's very important. Let's see. Try wallpapering with your spouse when neither of you done it before. Oh, most overhead painting. Yeah, that wallpapering, boy, that looks like a... Do people still do that? Is wallpapering still a thing? I don't know. You could... uh... Oh, oh, here, PB. Let's read this, and then I got another (laughs) short little story. Okay. My second fail, using a Wagner power painter, paint the garage. Bugs seem to like fresh paint. Yo, what do you do then? If you got a paint and you got bugs in the environment, you're kind of hosed, huh? 
Yeah, I mean, you basically have what... It adds texture. Well, but if somebody comes over and you you point that and they they look at that and they say, what's that? You say, and if you have to do it in an accent, you say, well, the reason why this is like this is because we wanted to texture it with the natural insects of the location. See? So, and that's worth an extra 500 bucks right there, you know? Oh, and speaking of that, what about concrete work? I've never done it other than mixing up... Well, I shouldn't say that. I've mixed up... Uh, you know, that quick crate to like dig a post hole or something like that. Oh, yeah. So, so again, up in Oregon, I built a quote white picket fence, very proud of myself, looked beautiful. And I did buy a power sprayer to do that, right? Because you got all the little edges and all that. It would be impossible to do by hand. And I had to, part way through, I think I had to go buy more paint or something like that. And <clears throat> the checkout person at Home Depot made a comment about me being covered in, you know, spray from this paint and saying, you know, you really should wear a respirator because I guess apparently because it was on my face and stuff too, it was apparent I wasn't wearing a mask. And she made the point of like, you know, all that stuff that's hitting your face is going into your lungs too. Like, oh, well, yeah, but at the same time, though, as you're talking time. about that, what are you holding in your hand? We don't <laughs> inhale, Dave. <laughs> Come on. Okay, Mr. Clinton, <laughs> whatever you say, sir. <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, I mean, that, 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 oh, 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 the biggest fail. Those, those things you buy at Home Depot that say, you know, uh, let me get into my commercial. Would you like a walkway in your household? Well, instead of paying a contractor to do a walkway, we have these forms. And these forms go on the ground. You just pour the quick creed on, and then when it dries, you pull them off and then move along. Uh, Could you do that? No, because I know. That? No, because I know what would end up happening. I would just have a bunch of cement rocks laying all over the ro- all over the yard. No, no, no. I am one of those type, uh, much to the chagrin of my wife, that if it's a project like that, get an estimate. Pay it. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you, that's one thing I wouldn't mind. Pay. The when you get a paved uh, driveway with actual pay. Oh, that looks sweet. But do you that know what looks- the cost of those are? I mean, we've got. In no. fact, we're we're Listen, looking at that now. Sweet. Well, we're looking at that in our driveway as long as it is. I mean, that's a that's a fifteen thousand dollar job. And it's like, yeah, it looks pretty, and I would love to well, have it, but. We'll get back to raising your prices to $1,000 exactly. a haircut. And... Oh, so here's this one. Is a, this is a good point, right? That if, you're, if your walls are uneven, mm-hmm. then like a textured... Well, plus also if you own a Chinese restaurant, isn't it mandatory that half of those have a textured red wallpaper on them? That's a good point. We're going to get, get letters from our Chinese population. Thank I, you. It was, it was a question. Oh, okay. Okay. So... Uh... <laughs> So here's one from Stephen. By the way, speaking of inhaling paint, the paint can on top of the ladder landed squarely on my head. Oh, you know what, Stephen? Such as the Zoom calls, this will not be used for any custom titles on the um, Shaving Cadre, so you're safe with that. But that brings up so many possibilities. Oh, So here you have another vote for uh, paving your driveway, Dave. Well, so, we are so going to do this? part of it. People that pay for dog grooming, are they cheap? Well, heck no. Well, no, because I, from what I've seen in the pet store, dogs do not, some dogs do not enjoy it. I've seen them battling with some dogs and you want them mad at somebody else, right? It's like, uh, it, you know, you, you learned in the nursing thing, I was a pediatric nurse. And uh, sometimes when we had to like put in IVs and stuff like that, And that we would tell the parents, let them be mad at us. We'll go do this. We'll bring them back. You hug them, comfort them. You be the good guy. I say same with dog grooming. Well, it's amazing that Tig Lily seems to know um, so many things. Um, Insider knowledge. Exactly. Just great insider knowledge. Well, we have, most of the people here know Kona, uh, a.k.a. El Doggo, a.k.a. the real Wiley Coyote. And uh, he is the one that had the attack. Well, I don't want to say attack. He attacked a Colorado River toad, but that's, you know, that's only because he wanted to get stoned out of his gourd, I think. But anyways, um, 
uh, we, I prefer to have the dog groomed for two reasons. One, now most people say, what does a husky a German shepherd need to get groomed for? Well, come over to my house in the summer. They have short hair, sure, but at the same time, they shed that hair like you would not believe. So having them groomed, I am terrified to cut the quick on a dog's oh. nail. I'm terrified of it. So they do that. They make the dog smell pretty. Uh, and as Tig Lilly said, um, Huskies are whiners. If you look at any video on YouTube right now, uh, Huskies are very vocal. But it's so nice because the dog comes back. He's got a bandana. He smells good. He's happy. And it's worth it. To me, it's <laughs> worth it. It's worth it because think about it. You're crawling in, you know, you're next to the bathtub or you're in the shower and the dog knows he's getting a bath and he's not happy about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so to me, it's just easy. So wait a minute. Is there a disagreement between you and your better half as to whether or not this should be paid for? Is that what I'm sensing oh, here? Oh, you could, you could say that. Maybe. Yes, you could say so that. So do you, do you not brush your dog? Yes, we do. We do. But oh, the problem, okay. and here is my philosophy on brushing the dog. I think that Kona creates hair as he's being brushed. Because I can sweep up a Wookiee in our kitchen every single day. Yeah. Because he, he just, he sheds everywhere. And plus, being half German Shepherd, half Husky, he's got an undercoat. And that undercoat is a, can be a mess. So to me, it supports the local economy. You know, it makes the dog feel good. Oh, these here, are my just yeah. These are my justifications. Yeah. Uh, and you know, for seventy bucks, come on, that's two cigars and a drink. I mean, right? You're wasting two cigars and a drink. I think I think you do it for the bandana. You well, really put an emphasis on the bandana. You know me well, sir. Yeah. Okay. And what do they smell? Does he use penhaligans or what do they put on your dog after? <sighs> Oh, that was the best suggestion in the world. That's a great idea. <laughs> Bespoke dog fragrance. Uh-oh. Hey, the, we could be on to something here. It's the next merch. Drinks and Dave's dog fragrance spray. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Here's one that we have not talked about. This is one, with, tomorrow being the 4th of July, and by the way, happy yeah. Independence Day to everybody. Hopefully you're going to have some fun. But the worst DIY project is the infamous backyard firework display. Everybody has one of those stories. Um, in our case, fireworks are illegal uh, in the state of Arizona as far as the ones that shoot up into the air, other than those that are professionals, hence professionals. Now, can we just drive across the border to New Mexico and buy every explosive device known to humanity? Absolutely. And so what do a lot of people do? Mm -hmm. They go over there. Now, you also know that Arizona is one of the most arid states in the union just like uh, where steven's from in uh, las vegas well you don't always know where a bottle rocket is going to land yep. now i have a story back when i was a kid my dad decided to invite all the neighborhood kids over uh, we lived on the east side of tucson and in, in, in a regular neighborhood and invited all the kids over for a firework extravaganza and these kids are you know we're like eight and so my dad goes to New Mexico and buys a ton, a ton of fireworks. And we live in a regular neighborhood at that time. So my dad's lighting off fireworks and M80s and sparklers and Roman candles and all that. Well, everybody around us had pools and we did too. And we found that a lot of these fireworks do not stop burning when they land in somebody's pool and they keep going until they explode and then they explode and there's bubbles <laughs> of smoke and so cool. the next thing that happens is the police department shows up there is smoke everywhere it looks like an artillery zone in the backyard uh, my dad looked at the cop and i swear to you as god is my witness god rest his soul my dad says we're not shooting off fireworks now, the neighbors had already been screaming at him about, you know, stuff landing in their dog, stuff landing in their pool. And all the kids, of course, when you're young and you see a police officer, what do you do? You scatter. Yeah. And so my dad got a nice little ticket for that. But, yeah, so fireworks. Uh... Well, so I'm curious what uh, PB's thinking about that uh, it's the worst DIY project. Is it the worst uh, <clears throat> for injury or is it the worst just because you, you pit? 
in places like where you and I live, what we can buy is not all that exciting. Yeah, it's just the ground you still stuff, have to right? Pay a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. and you're sitting there watching it, knowing it's the best you can do, but it's not all that. Yeah, and then you end up burning yeah. your patio. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings up a whole nother subject of using a power washer for the first time and the, the, the triggers on these power washers. They're not easy triggers. They're either no. full on hurricane or off. And if you're not holding on to that extremely tightly, it's pretty hilarious what it looks like. And see, yes, what Pantea just said, Kona deserves a day spa. I hope somebody I like, in this house is listening to that. I like this one. Pampered owners, pampered dog. Exactly. I don't know if he agrees with that. I think it's just a statement of. Well, I don't even know if, happening. I don't know if Steven's ever told us if he has any critters. Well. Well, Rich, Rich is oh. mentioning hot, um, uh, I, hot I wheels and bottle rockets. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, the scotch is having its effect. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we used to do one thing better is in the older cars, uh, they had uh, rain channels. They had rain channels on the doors. And so a friend of mine and I, we would get bottle rockets. And this didn't even have to be in 4th of July. We would get bottle rockets and take off on the road. And then what you do is you take the bottle rocket, you put it in that little launch tube, which is it's just like a launch tube, and you light it with a lighter. And what's so cool is he's in front of you, and the bottle rocket shoots straight out and explodes right in front of his windshield. Pretty cool. Actually. Good old days. Boy, <laughs> the, the stuff we learn lessons from, huh? <laughs> so, you know, so, but yeah, I, I think we would agree, at least I would anyways, that I think it's a good idea to hire a professional for specific items. You know, uh, electrical, yeah. plumbing, um, tree trimming. Um, you know, I, I... Yeah, laying out your clothes in the morning... <laughs> Things like that. I agree. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> tell us tell us about that story. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that, you know, if you want things done right, you pay a professional and, you know, you don't have a valet? No, I don't. No, and I don't. We, we call them, down here in southern Arizona, we call them valets. <laughs> <laughs> we call them valets. <laughs> oh, you know, but actually, I guess you could consider <laughs> DIY and cooking, too. You really could, you know, do you go on YouTube and see this wonderful, wonderful dish and you're thinking, okay, do I want to go to a high end restaurant and spend 80 bucks or can I yes. cook it at home? No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it never, ever turns out the way that it looks on the YouTube channel ever. Well, plus my, you know, I'm not a skilled chef. So anything that's over four ingredients is past kind of my level of comfort. So, well, I mean, you know, it's funny. I mean, do you have any recipes that your parents, you know, that, that your parents have brought down over, over time that you will make, you know, that bring back that, that we have one that's a, a jello salad. And how did we know that DIY was going to become recipe dime too? But you take, uh, if you can find apricot jello, if you can't find apricot what? jello, you can, yeah, just wait. If you can't find apricot jello, you find orange jello. So you take the orange jello or the apricot jello and you cook it. Once it's cooked, you let it set up a little bit and then you pour in sliced bananas and pineapple. Then you let it firm up. Okay, then it gets better. Then cook, some, cook yourself some vanilla pudding. Take that vanilla what? pudding. Uh... Wait a minute. Take that vanilla pudding and mix it with cool whip yeah then so it, it becomes almost like a frosting but thinner then you take the jello once it's set up in a square pan and you layer that wondrous beautiful vanilla cool whip topping on top of it and then you sprinkle salty walnuts all over the top of it that was something yeah. that my mom made and we we have to make double batches of it because in the summer it's so refreshing but it is so good. So that's one recipe that, and then of course I make Puerto Rican food because my, my aunt taught me how to do that. But um, those are DIY stuff that I will do. <clears throat> wow. Well, so I, I you know, uh, my dad was a minister, so I grew up at church potlucks and we had lots of jello salads. I have never seen anything like that in my life. But that sounds like one of those things you'd have to try 
Yeah, it's uh, it's just it's just wonderful. P. Beat, I was just he was just saying uh, you didn't put that in there. Okay, uh, has either one of you tried uh, in your jobs tried DIY fixes in a crunch, even though you knew better? Well, being a barber, if I have uh, something that I have to fix, it usually involves a band aid and alum, um, <laughs> because uh, because and the problem is you can't fix a bad haircut as we know, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, and I'm probably going to get letters, but, um, you know, we fix Supercuts haircuts. And the the problem is, a perfect example, at least in my job, is what they call a cowlick. And what a cowlick is, is a, an area of the hair that just grows differently than every, everywhere else on your body. What most barbers will do is try to cut that short. Well, when they cut it too short, it gets, it stands up. There's no way to fix it. You, you just have to tell the person, sorry, dude, this is coming down to scalp, and we're going to have to let it grow out. So in my case, yeah, there's really not a lot of DIY fixes that you can do. However, if, you, you know, if, 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 if you're doing the, the behind the neck and you're doing a line, uh, yeah, you just, if, if the line's a little crooked, you just go a little higher. You know? yeah. So how about the, you? The one, you? Well, I wouldn't say you, even though you knew better because you know in, in medicine you wouldn't want to just kind of fly by the seat of your pants but the diy thing uh that we were always great at i don't know if you've ever seen it but it's it's like this this white tube mesh that's super stretchy um and it comes in uh it comes in various widths co right? like co-wrap co-wrap that type of stuff no no it's it's like a fish net Okay. But it'll stretch like crazy. And especially in the burn unit, you would have to, you know, have dressings on people, but you didn't want to use tape or anything. So we got super inventive with being able to make, I could make a, a tank top out of this, this stuff. And you would uh, rip off the ties of a face mask and tie the shoulders on and stuff like that. So we got pretty inventive with stuff like that. Um, but not out of... So go yes, back it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I answered it in the thing. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah. grow back the same way. Once the cowlick's there, the cowlick's there. Um, but going back to the barber thing, I think PB actually meant the barber chair. Uh, I have what they call a Coke and electric lift barber chair from 1940. And no, I will not attempt to fix that at all. I call somebody for that because if I screw that up, there's no parts for it. So do you, do uh, you have one of those or you got the foot pedal and you no, no, it's a lot. I have a foot pedal, but it's electric. So it, it raises. 40s. Yeah, it raises and wow. lowers automatically. Yeah. My barber, uh, my my barber instructor actually sold it to me. And um, it. Uh, Steve, yeah, no, I won't mess with that. Yeah, Stephen, I can't do that because could you imagine the tan lines you get from wearing mesh, you know? <laughs> That, that wouldn't that wouldn't work. There's out. a movie, and I can't think of the movie where there was somebody wearing a mesh tank top, <laughs> and I, I, I and I, the subject matter was weird. And uh, Trunker says that uh, he is banned from the kitchen in his own home. Dropped a rather expensive chef knife that I bought from H R H on my foot. Like oh ow, like a harpoon it was. Woof. H. Well, and this guy, I don't know, he's the only one that was alive in the 40s that's in the in the bar today, so I don't know why he's asking you. <clears throat> well, you know, it's it, it's amazing, um, you know, when you talk about DIY projects and stuff like that, and I think we have to admit, those of us all here that are married, um, that if it wasn't for our better halves, there's a good chance we probably would not be alive when we tried DIY projects. Because DIY projects for men have a tendency to be ego driven, where ah, I can do that. I can. Why do I need to pay somebody to do that? Well, I, I shout out to your wife for keeping you off the ladder. I tell you, plenty of people wind up in the emergency department because of ladder stuff, so. Well, I'm the biggest, for... yeah, the biggest, the biggest thing that's going to keep hospitals going. You mentioned this over on the forum, is pickleball. Pickleball, yeah. Pickleball. So I didn't post the whole. Yeah, so I posted this thing about uh, this article came out that all sorts of emergency room visits are related to pickleball now, and it's the more the more seasoned people tend to be playing pickleball instead of tennis. 
And so they get these injuries. But the other problem is, is that at their age, they don't heal like they used to. So you get these injuries that they can't really recover from. And it's mm-hmm. going to be the new epidemic, right, of uh, yeah. of uh, senior care, pickleball, supportive care or something. Well, it's amazing how it's amazing how popular that game is becoming, not even for just the elderly, but it's 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 just it's going crazy. And, you know, and Rich brings up a good point about why we like to do DIY projects. And it's because we need the, the greatest next tools. Oh, dude, five years ago, I was able to buy an angle grinder for the first time in my life or something. Oh, that thing is sweet. Anything that shoots off sparks and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's I like we, years ago, I worked at a Texaco gas station and the Snap-on guy would always show up. You know, and snap on are like the most expensive tools on the planet, but you don't know why you need them until, you, but you just, you know that you do. You want them, yeah. you know. And I do need to ask you one last thing because this is a DIY thing. I understand that your lovely wife, uh, I believe it was your wife, maybe I'm wrong, bought you a traditional um, oh boy, kebab oh, cooker. Oh, yeah, yeah. The grill, the grill. So you have to tell us about that. Yeah. Well, I don't know traditional or not, but um, so, you know, Persian kebabs are, uh, how do I quickly explain it? Um, they've got the, the kind of a meat kebab that's kind of ground beef and onion and turmeric and all that stuff that their their kebab skewers are actually like an inch wide and very thin. And you take this mixture in and squish it along the thing. So and they so like they, a knife, almost like a knife, like a sword kind of? Yeah, like more. Yeah, they look like a sword. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and so the grills that you use for these have no grate on top, but they've got little slots so that you can put these swords up on their edge and roast them this way and that way. And I, I tell you, that is my favorite Persian dish to this day. When uh, Now, is it very similar to like, you know how when they mix... Uh, ground beef and lamb when you're you know when you're getting a gyro you know how they have the the roll they pack the meat around and it's and it wrote the rotisserie is it similar to that kind of no well okay. no it ta- it tastes different because of the two and again it's almost one to one ground beef and onion so it's oh. very onion heavy so when you know you have like a little vapors afterwards it's not that pleasant but the the best way to eat it is you get, you know, you have like a, a, a very thin flat bread and you put in fresh basil leaves and wrap it up. But, hey, and it is, it is delicious. It is delicious. Well, it sounds good. And what, well, the thing is, I know that there's somebody here listening that when you said the word turmeric, that was, that, that's all she's hearing now is turmeric. Um, but that sounds wonderful. Now, do you, do you cook it over a charcoal or a gas? Sure. It's, it's charcoal. And as you know, I'm a gas grill guy, right? Cause I mm-hmm. kind of thought that, um, I didn't want to deal with, uh, setting up the charcoal. And so the, the other thing that this taught me is that getting the coals going wasn't nearly as labor intensive as I thought, you know, I said, I'm never going to do charcoal cause I get home and I want to cook. And I realize that, you know, what is it? Another 15, 20 minutes? Maybe it's not that big of a deal. So I get now that is, big lump charcoal. Oh, I was going to say, you, do you get the lump charcoal or like the Kingsford bags? I mean, you get the no. big lump charcoal. Um, yeah. And what? And, and I know that uh, Pantea just wrote that you serve it with lavash bread. Now, how is lavash bread different than like the bread that you would get with a, um, with a gyro? I mean, I know it's probably thinner and crispier. Is it thinner and crispier? Is it like a naan? Is it something like that or? No, it's thinner than non, maybe a okay. third. And it comes in big sheets. It's probably the sheets that we buy it from. I think that they've got it at Trader Joe's if you've got Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know, a foot and a half by two feet. These sheets so, of bread. Yeah. So you prep the, the ground beef and I assume that you use probably what, a, a 70-30 or an 80-20 uh, as far as that. And then just, and then mix the onions in it with the spices. Now, is there yeah, any other no, spices uh, besides turmeric? There is. I'm forgetting, and she'll 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 tell us. There's garlic in there, salt and pepper, and what's the other Persian spice you throw in there? She'll put it in the chat. But um, and this is where I screwed up because I'd never made it before myself. So I bought eighty twenty based on a recipe, and the onion you put in a food processor, and you basically mm-hmm. make a, a paste out of it. Really? And okay. All the juice out of it, 
and then uh, then you and so when her dad makes it, he take he buys like I don't know, I don't, I think it's not Chuck, but he buys different cuts of meat and puts it through a, a food grinder. Okay, and they'll do it many times. Well, I just bought ground beef. Okay, and part of the problem was that was still too coarse. So he said you got to put the ground beef in the food processor and make oh, a wow. paste out of that too, because oh. it's got to be a certain consistency to hold together on the skewer. But it's got to be, yeah. but it's got to just be melt in your mouth. Oh, if you do it right, they're so, and, and that's the best part. So to get it off the skewer, you fold it in the bread and pull the skewer out. <sighs> and then you've got the juices soaking into the bread. That's the best <laughs> part. If you get the, get the. Hold on a second. I need to check for, I need to check for flights to San Francisco. Give me a minute. <laughs> now, do you serve that with, uh, what do you normally serve that with? Like a, a, a salad or on rice or. Per, Persian rice, you know, with a, what they call the tadik on the bottom. It's the crispy rice that kind of sits there. Oh, okay. See, like in Puerto Rican food, we call that pagao, you know, which is a crispy rice. Now, let me ask you a question. Oh. This may sound uh, dumb here, but the difference between Persian food and Indian food, is it a pretty wide difference or is it? Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, and then they also will serve it with just a fresh, uh, raw white onion. Oh. Now, is there a yeah, sauce but, usually, or is it, or is it just, just plain? No, it's just, oh. it's just this beef, and you put herbs in there, and just, oh, yeah. So the, my delicious. question then is, if you've got ten skewers, what's everybody else eating? Yeah, that's right. I've already, I told her I need more skewers. Oh, that because, just sounds uh, yeah. incredible. Yeah, and that's the other, the grilled tomatoes. You just shove tomatoes onto skewers, and you, you roast them over the. Well, because when I was in the military, and I was in Iraq and Iran. Um, we had something, and that's probably what it was. I just remember what you said about taking the bread, and I remember it was a food stand, and I remember him pulling the skewer off, taking the bread, and sliding it off. And it's like you don't want to leave. You just want to kind of camp out there and just throw him your wallet and say, feed me until I pass out. You know, it just, yeah. oh, it just sounds yeah. wonderful, wonderful. So, well, before we've gone, oh, this is our longest show to date. Um, so do we have any, any other DIY questions or anything else? And what we'd like to ask of all of our, um, all of our barflies is either email uh, Dave or myself or email us at um, uh, drinksanddaves at gmail.com for show ideas, you know, because we're really trying to build this channel. But, you know, a lot of times this was kind of an impromptu uh and it actually worked out really well. But we'd like to, uh, uh, to know what you guys would like to see. And we're trying to steer, I mean, we'll do shaving-related stuff. But that's kind of what our other channels are for. But we'd like to steer away from that. And we'd like to hear from you uh, for us to do uh, different subjects. Because, you know, we, we're trying our best to do our shows every Monday night at uh, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, and we'd like to hear from you guys. So either you put it in the chat or, or email us or PM us at the, uh, at the other forum. We'd really like to hear that. And because we want to make this channel accessible to everyone, you know, because obviously our, our shaving channels are very much a niche type thing. You know, people that care about wet shaving and stuff. And we want this to go out to everyone. You know, women, men, you know, even kids, for lack of a better, you know, thing. that We want subjects that we can uh, talk to everybody about. And it's really critical for you guys in the, uh, in the bar, so to speak, to we try to make this as interactive as possible. And, and I think this show, Dave, and you yeah. can tell me if I'm wrong, I think this is one, this has been one of the most interactive shows yeah. we've had so this far. Great. We, yeah. we really appreciate it uh, more than anything else. Um, so uh, on behalf of Dave and myself, we'd like to wish everybody a very, very safe and happy Independence, 4th of July. Hopefully you'll be spending it with family. And uh, are there any final questions for us before we, uh, before we sign off? And Dave, I'll let you uh, look at that in case there is. Yeah, no, and I'll just add not just uh, ideas, but we have we mentioned before, if you have any interesting hobbies, jobs, and all that stuff, we're looking uh, for other guests to have on. Exactly. And if you'd be willing to, you know, you'd be willing to come on the show, uh, we'd certainly appreciate it. And yes, Stephen, you are now a bar fly. And, and you know, and, and I think we need to tap Stephen, uh, you know, and he's probably going to pass out when he hears me say this because him and I have a, uh, an interesting banter that we go back and forth on because we love each other so much. Um, and I mean that in all sincerity. But this man is a beer aficionado. 
This guy knows mm. beer. And I think maybe at one point we need to have him on the show uh, to talk about to talk about beer. So yeah. well if there's nothing if there's nothing else, we want to thank everybody. And we certainly appreciate you guys showing up for drinks and daves and please join us next week at 5 p.m pacific for the drinks and dave show and we thank everybody so much tell your friends subscribe 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 and we will get you in there as soon as we can later Take care, everybody <laughs>